Hey guys, how's it going? Feminism has been something that a lot of us men have been working with now for the past like five to seven years. Just a nonstop berating of all these fucking like negative concepts about us, about us men, about how society treats women, about how a lot of minorities are treated. And I've been keeping a very open mind to it. I've been thinking through the concepts, I've been listening, I've been working through things to understand what is logically going on, to see if they actually have a point. Maybe it is our fault, maybe us as men, maybe we are really just holding down women, maybe women in general are just, you know, victims. Maybe they're just getting fucked over by society, by culture. Maybe that's the case. At least I thought this until I really started delving into the facts and the data and really looking it through. And as I kept going through point through point through point, um, I started realizing like one after the other, they were all wrong. And, and not even just wrong, but like horrendously wrong to the point to where I wondered for a long time, how is it that somebody else can come to the conclusion that this is right? That this is the way the world works. And I was so baffled by this. I like, I literally, I, I thought that there must be something wrong with the way I'm thinking about it. Maybe I'm not hitting it from the right angle. Maybe there's like some aspect to it that I'm not, that I don't see my current standing. So I kept thinking about it. I stopped for a little bit and I'm like, okay, look, they have to have a point. They, they have to, this has to make sense. If like, if they're so emotional and so hardcore about it, there has to be a point. This has to make sense. So I, I suspended this for a little bit longer and I continued to delve into it and think about it. And this is what I came up with. Now, firstly, before I get into this, I did make a video about the women's perspective. It was actually based on this, uh, this entire period of me studying this and thinking about it. If you guys want to, this is me defending women's side of things. But for this video, this is going to be me defending men, men who have been drastically hurt and not even just men in general, but society as a whole. This, this thing, this movement is supposed to be about empathy is actually hurting so many fucking people. So many people. Like, and it's absolutely, it's like, I, I've like, I've known so many people to, to almost commit suicide, to being just massively depressed by this thing that was supposedly meant to be empathetic and caring towards people. And then I find it's the complete fucking opposite. Now I know a lot of feminists, they hate it when somebody gets logical with them because it, it, for them, it doesn't come down to logic. It comes down to, are you hurting somebody? Now, this is what I'm saying in this video. I don't, I actually want to create more love and caring for the world. That's why I made this video. I didn't make this video to hurt you guys. I made it to help people out because I think there's a massive misunderstanding between men and women about this simple topic that we don't understand each other. You think that you don't have to understand us or that you think that you already understand us, which is the Dunning-Kruger effect. If you guys don't know what this is, look it up. But you guys are so certain that you understand what goes on with men inside of us that now you're trying to fix us. Would, would you guys allow that the other way around where we were trying to fix you? I, I don't think it'd be the case. Like men think drastically and biologically are drastically different than women. And I think it shows on the extremes. Now, a lot of feminists would say that that culture shapes men in the way they are and it's society that makes us men the way we are. Th this isn't the case. It comes down to sexual selection. Now, we as a, as a species, we have twice as many women in our ancestry than we do men. Now, what does this mean? This means that men were drastically uh, cold out. They were, we were drastically, like the ones that weren't worthy of having sex didn't get sex. There was more men in our past that didn't have sex than that did. And that's, that's absolutely crazy. Do you, do you think that this did not biologically affect the way that men think versus women? Do you think it didn't like affect our, our extremes? Do you think it made us a little more aggressive? Do you think it made us more risk takers? Do you think that it made us act a lot differently when it comes to dating? Do you think there's a biological difference in dating from men to women? Because I guarantee you, as a dating coach, who's been doing this for a very long time and is very fucking good at getting people results, there is a massive difference in men and women when it comes to dating and biologically. Because the, the ways that women talk, the ways that men talk are different, completely, massively. And it's like, people, because they want to get emotional about this, they want to say, everybody's equal, everybody's the same, nobody's different. That now, that like, now the people that are on the extremes, us men that are aggressive and high in sex drive, that, you know, lust for sex, that, you know, can't help but look at a girl's ass when we have it that, that way. We're, we're built this way. The same way that a schizophrenic, you know, is built the way that the schizophrenic is built. Like, would you tease or like try to like, like clamp down on that, on that uh, mental disorder? Like, would you punish that person for having that mental disorder? So why are you punishing men for having a sex drive? Now I ask you, as I do in every video, 
to be open-minded because the point of this video is not to hurt you. It is to help society as a whole, is give you the alternative perspective. And unfortunately, I feel like when people get entrenched in an the idea, they only want to listen to content that fits their ideals. Like a lot of you guys that probably disagree with the, the idea of this video have probably already clicked on the video to down thumb it and then click right off, which is the most closed-minded thing you could possibly fucking do. Instead, take a pause, listen to my points, because I'm gonna go through point by point and give you the opposing side of the argument. Because as a person, if you truly want to help out the world, and you want to make the world a better place, why do you think that other people think about things differently than you do? Why do you think there's an opposing side? Because I thought about your side for a very long time. I think it's time that you guys listen to my side. Now, this video is gonna to touch upon a few things. First, I think biology is playing a factor in the way that men and women are playing out of society in forms of the wage gap and forms of harassment, mansplaining, and the way that you guys are treating this argument as a whole. Like, I think that biology is playing a massive role in this, and especially on the extremes. On the extremes of both of our sexes, which everything that we are is on a spectrum. Like, don't, I'm not gonna say that every man's more aggressive than women, because it's not the case. There's some women that are above average in aggressiveness. There's some men that are below average in aggressiveness, and some of those women overlap. There's like, some women are very good with objects, but they're not gonna be as good as the people who are like on the opposite end of the spectrum who are good with objects. Like women are better with feelings and emotions biologically. Like you guys are just more interested in it. And then us men, we're more interested in physicality. We're more interested in like logical debate. We're more interested in math. Now the common answer I got whenever I give somebody facts and they didn't have an answer to it or a proper answer to my rebuttal would be that I was mansplaining, that I was talking down to them for giving them a fact. <laughs> All right, so having a debate or trying to find a truth is not mansplaining. Like, it could go both ways. Like, I feel more times than not that I get talked down to by feminists when I actually have this conversation with them, when I try to have a logical debate. And we don't even have a word for that. It's, it's literally that you guys, like, I feel like a lot of people, when they don't have an answer to something, they, they, they want to get emotional about it. And they want a way to, like, win the argument. So I feel like mansplaining became a thing. Mansplaining is a ton of fucking BS. It's, like, complete 110% utter, like, trash. I don't even want to hear about it. What I'm going to do in this video is lay down facts. I'm going to lay down logic. If anybody wants to debate with me in the comments, it's going to be through logic and it's going to be through thought. It's not going to be but through emotions. It's not going to be name calling. If anybody's name calling, the comment gets deleted. If you want to have a debate, I will leave it in the comments and I will debate you. I don't mind this. But if you want to make it emotional, if you want to make this an emotional campaign, I promise you, the emotional side that you guys are taking is hurting so many fucking people. I'm not gonna allow it. What if we're built this way? What if it's not culture? What if it, like we're biologically built this way? The same way as you guys would say, somebody's born gay, or somebody is born a woman in a man's body. Do we not get the same justification as those people? What if I like legitimately feel this way biologically and then you're suppressing me, you're pushing this down, you're forcing me into a, into a, a little box that doesn't fit me? What if I were to say some, Guy comes to me and he's like, I'm a woman. And I'm like, no, you're not. No, you're not, not a woman. And like everybody in fucking society said that way. Now, let me put it this way. You guys are helping out that little tiny portion of people. Now there's this massive portion of people that are suffering in the exact same way that you're trying to make sure that person is suffering. Is that, does this sound right to you? Does this sound right whatso fucking ever? If your goal is true empathy, watch this video. Yeah, I confess, Father, I confess, cause I've been living- Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna get into is psychology and biology. I feel like women in general don't understand the dating sign for men. Now, as a dating coach, I've, I know this very fucking well. I've studied this, I've approached tens of thousands of women, I've had clients approach women, and I had to teach them how to be attractive. For both of us, there's nobody that has it any better or worse. We just have it different. Now, as somebody that's gone out and like, you know, approach a lot of women, I've, I've myself have tried to become as attractive as humanly possible with the opposite sex. Because of like the ratio I gave you guys before that we have twice as many women in our ancestry, basically the top 1% of society of men are getting all the women. That's just how it is. The top 1% are getting all the women. And then 99% of, of the other men are getting little to no results. Like, so that's, that's gonna be eye-opening for a lot of you guys. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna be like, my ex isn't like that, my ex could get laid whenever the fuck you want. And then, don't get me wrong, did he get, if you ever cheated on you, or if you ever had an ex that cheated on you, weren't you surprised by how ugly the girl was? 
If he had so much choice, don't you think the girl would be more attractive? So, this, is, this is what I'm getting at. So I feel like the problem is, is that a lot of men are sexually repressed, but we're not allowed to show this because you women are attracted to high status. Like people value men on high status, not the way we look, by what we produce, by how we talk, by how we speak, by how we lead, by how confident we are. We don't get rewarded for just being like, in general, as a man, we have to hustle. And not just that, th this is the double standard. If you were to get to 30 and not work at all and not make any money, you can marry a guy that did. You have that safety net. As a man, we don't fucking have that shit. And not even just that, we get ostracized by society if we don't work, if we don't have hustle, if we don't make money. We're looked down upon. You guys don't get that. If you're attractive, you don't fucking get this. There's, so everyone wants to talk about the pay gap or this gap or what, what women are getting like fucked over on. How about this for stats? There's five times as many homeless men as there are women. The amount of men in prison massively dwarfs the amount of women in prison. The amount of suicides, again, massively is different than men to women. Why is this? Because when this comes down to it, when a man can't succeed in life, there's so much pain that like, that is just dropped on the guy's back and the guy can't express this. Because if he were to tell you that he's in pain, you'll leave him. There was one point where I was having an issue with money when I was, when I was interning for this company, where I was trying to get my mentorship, where I was like not making any money. I was sleeping on the floor of my brother's place like in, here in Las Vegas. And I had no money, and I was afraid of like not having enough money for rent, not having enough money to pay for food, and I started I started sobbing. Like I just broke down and started sobbing. Well, the girl I was dating at the time sees this, and she hugs me, and I felt like, oh, this is nice. You know, I'm I'm being vulnerable with my girl and whatnot. The next week, she goes off to go hang out with her mentor, and <laughs> I see pictures of them going hiking and whatnot. And I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, I thought she was gonna fly out there, and I thought she was gonna meet him. As it turns out. She cheated on me with her rich mentor when I told her that I was broke. We can't express this to you. We have to lie. Like when men are not doing well, when men aren't getting women, we lie to you. When men aren't making money, we lie to you. We're like, this, this fear of not being enough is like the same as fear of being loved. We don't want to lose our tribe. We don't want to lose our friends. We don't want to lose our girls. Like if we don't have what you know, makes us high status, if what society tells us makes us high status, we're fucked. And that's just the way it is. I don't victimize this fucking shit. I don't say, you know what? There's somebody out there that's making this the problem for me. No, I, I, I step up to the plate. I fucking go at bat. And that's what the rest of the fucking men do. Some men give up and some men, you know, fucking decide to be losers for the rest of their lives. But the majority of us, we fucking like put our grit in and we fucking fight. We fucking like blaze our way. Like when you wonder why there's a pay gap, this is the fucking reason. And not even just this, I'll say this. Do you think the fact that we have twice as many women in our past and that you are also the choosers of sex, do you think this makes a factor in the fact that we might be a little bit more risk takers? Because if we don't take risks, when we're on the bottom of the totem pole and we know we're not gonna get sex, do you think we'd risk going and fighting that fucking lion? Do you think we'd go risk like hunting down the thing? The guys that took the risks were the ones that got the rewards, the ones that got the women and got their genes into the next, into the next generation. So when it comes down to it, when, when somebody has to run a business, when somebody takes a risk to run a business, that person is more risk averse, I feel, than a woman would be because of biology. Now, why do women in general, why are you guys the choosers when it comes to sex? Because you guys are the ones that invest in the baby. Like as a man, I can like, I can inseminate hundreds of girls in a day, thousands of girls in a day, but you only have one chance to make a baby work. So you wanna look for the highest status person that's gonna make sure one, that your baby's gonna be healthy because there's a one in eight chance that a baby would make it to their teenage years, one in eight. And if you choose a loser, if you choose a guy that's very low on the totem pole, the baby's gonna be fucked. Like if you choose a man that's loved by the tribe, that has status, that is strong, that is masculine, like that guy has a lot better chance of defending your baby. So you guys look for status. So you guys are the choosers. So when it comes down to it, there's a biological difference between you and us. When it comes down to it, when there's a pay, wage gap, when there's a, when there's a gap in the wage and how much we pay, it's a biological difference. We're more aggressive. We'll ask for the raise. We'll go and like chase down the money. When it comes down to it, we'll take that risk because when it came down to it, you guys would only choose those guys that had the high status. And when it comes down to it, that high status comes from a very type of, very certain type of um, 
of mentality, of a, of a mental running. And this is what it did. It was, the, it was that risk-taking ability that, that got um, progenerated, that got into us. There were more men that got weeded out over the fucking years. And the only ones that, like, that, um, that led to the men that are living today were the ones that had their babies, like, that survived, that fucking fought. And so now you got a, a world full of like, fighters. So don't be surprised when there's a wage gap. And not to mention, too, maternity leave. If you're raising a baby, of course, of course, there's going to be a difference in pay gap. This is just all biology, and this is what this is what frustrates me so much. This is just this is logical, and unfortunately, I'm not pointing fingers, but I feel like when it comes down to it, people want to take stances that benefit them and benefit their tribe. And you guys feel like it's an us versus them scenario, where it's us versus the men that are making all the money, us versus them versus the men that are super strong, us versus them against the guys that get to make all the choices when they usually become president. Like you, you guys are so fucking surprised, and you guys get so mad, but it's not us versus them. It's just difference. Like you guys have some things that are better. Us men have some things that are better. And when, when you do this, you're just fucking the system up and you're hurting a lot of people. Now, because of this too, us men, we care a lot more about things like being physical, about fighting. We're, we're built stronger. Like we're built, like we actually have thicker bones. This, and this is another situation that is just science. This isn't gonna be argued. This is science. We're bigger, we're stronger. There are some guys that are really low and there's some girls that are really high that can probably overlap. But for the most part, the mass majority of men, if we were to grab a random group of guys versus a random group of girls and said fight, the girls would be annihilated. This is just the world, way the world works. And it's because we were so competitive in our past. I feel it's biological for people to want more for their tribe and for their people. And I feel like feminists feel like they need more for them, their tribe, which they feel like is the women. And I feel like the men, the evil fucking men on the other side are the evil ones that are taking all the shit away from them. And now, they're, they're, they're fighting to, like, to dominate the entire fucking world at, at the sacrifice of the whole. They're like, fuck everybody else that isn't us. And it's, it's a biological thing too, but it's an evil fucking mentality. It's fucking terrible. And it's like, when you get so emotional about something, when you're unwilling to hear the other side, how, how do you think you're gonna have a realistic view of what's really going on? And I'll say this, as a species, we have the amazing ability to make an emotional decision and then create logic to back it up. This is a human trait. If you don't ha understand and know that you have this in you, then you're probably blind completely to it and you probably do this on the regular. If you stop right now, if you're feeling emotional and you're making a logical decision, stop with the emotions, quiet it down and think it through like critically, am I wrong? Don't make a judging function that there's a right way and a wrong way of doing things because that's not the truth. The world is gray, it's not black and white. It's this very fuzzy thing. And I feel like in today's society, like to get people off their seats, you wanna make this, this horrid argument where like, this is the way the world works or the other side's evil. And it's like, that's not what's going on. There's no good or bad side. There's just gray. Like people do this online because they need to get people off their feet. They need to get people who believe in them to take action because they need to make them fearful and angry. And that's exactly what's happening with feminism. There's like, there's no gray zone. The other side fucking sucks. They're fucking assholes. Fuck them. No, stop. Gray zone. Think things critically. Stop with the emotions. Think it out because everything's a gray zone. There's no black or white. All right, now I'm gonna get into something that I know for sure has hurt so many fucking men and who have been very fucking quiet about this, who are embarrassed about the situation and who will not bring this forward. And I'm gonna do that firstly by being the first one to say that I was victimized by the situation. The, the worst fucking word, the word that I hate the most, victim mentality. When I'm gonna tell you this, I was victimized by this, this entire idea, the Me Too movement. I know so many men that were falsely accused of rape and then had to stay quiet about it because you guys would attack them regardless of whether or not they were falsely accused or not. That like, I was, I was falsely accused of rape. I was considering suicide until I was proven innocent. I was thinking, I'm gonna fucking hang myself. I thought this, I was gonna kill myself. And I was told that the government and the way it was, they were inclined, very heavily inclined and pressured to put me away, whether or not I was innocent. And that was fucked up. And there's so many guys that I know personally that had the same exact situation because some girl got emotional and decided, I'm mad at this guy, so I'm gonna fuck his entire life up. What the fuck? Like, how is this fucking a thing? How is this, how are you guys even fucking allowing this? Like, it's fucking insane and mental. I know more men that were falsely accused of rape than were actually, than women that were actually raped. Like, really? And not even just that, it didn't, even, it extended beyond this. I had PTSD for two years. I would wake up every time I heard a cop siren. Like I was, I was in the news for months 
after this whole situation, I was in the newspapers, I was on TV. They said I allegedly raped somebody when like, obviously the court hadn't even happened. The court date hadn't happened. And I spent years trying to get all the shit taken down offline because I was proven innocent. It took me years of uh, my name, my first and last name in the newspapers, every fucking where, all over Sacramento. My ex ended up hitting me up and being like, you raped somebody? I'm like, I didn't fucking rape somebody. Like how, you guys talk a lot about people being afraid to come forward for rape. Imagine that for a man. I, two years later, I, I was here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I was fresh out of mentorship and I was really broke, so I started um, promoting on the strip. And then like um, the gaming control board came through town and they wanted us to tell them if we've ever been arrested, and even if we've been arrested, like, and it was like sponged or we've proven innocent, they still wanted us to write it down on the paper. So I wrote down, you know, I was allegedly raped, but I was proven innocent. A month later, I lost my job to this feminist investigator that went through all my newspapers and found them online and I lost my job. And you know what, not even that, just that, I could not work in a casino. I could not be a promoter. I lost that job, which ultimately became a blessing in disguise because then I became a club crawl promoter, which is like a very tough sales position. And I was forced to sink or swim, broke, go broke and homeless or to rise to the occasion, which luckily I rose to the occasion. But I'll say this, there were a lot of people that were fucked over by the situation. Like I was proven innocent and I still lost my job in Vegas. Is that right? And for all the stories that I've known, like I, <laughs> the amount of times that I had to save a client or save one of my friends from a, like a, an alleged rape story where somebody was falsely accused of rape is ridiculous. And it was like, like I've had, I've known half a dozen different cases and there's only one case of rape that I knew was real. And that case of rape, I'm gonna say this, every dude had it out for this guy. We were all trying to get this guy like fucking and arrested. We were telling all the women that got raped, you put that man the fuck away. Like there is no rape culture. This thing doesn't fucking exist. Us as men, we love you guys. We care about you women. Like why would we ever want to do something like that to you? We emotionally care, empathetically care about you. There was one time where um, one of my exes, she got hit in the face with a plate and she got a black eye. Every dude in that restaurant was telling her if it was me, they would kick my ass just for like, like a black eye, which, you know, if I came into my work with a black eye, I would get teased about it with my friends, like no big deal. And again, this is not victim mentality. This is not me being like, oh no, that's right or wrong. It's just different. Again, it's biological difference. It's not something that I can get mad about. It's not a societal thing that I need to change. It's a biological thing that's gonna be, that I'm just gonna be okay with. Like that's just biology. Say that men are a part of rape culture. We don't rape. I've never had the instance where I wanted to do that to a girl. Because I'm an empathetic, caring human being. As is every other person. They're, like biologically, here's another biology thing. We are all made to be empathetic. We all have emotions. Other than like sociopaths, but they're a very small sliver of the population. And I'll say this, both women and men have equal portions of sociopathy. It's equal. Okay? Like men don't rape because we're empathetic. Feminism is straight up punishing guys for the way they are born when they're blaming us for doing the same thing to other people. Even me talking about the fact that I falsely raped somebody is putting a huge fucking target on my back. This is why no men ever talk about this. None of my friends ever falsely accused of rape ever talked about it, ever. Because it's for this exact same reason. There's a massive ostracization towards somebody that did this. Even if you're falsely accused, the amount of like love and respect you lose is massive. Me doing this, target on my back. I can get fucked over for this being public. Is it specifically about feminists? And I, and and I'll clarify too, just yeah. before it's the the woke intersectional like right. you know right. more extreme. Yeah, not the not the person who calls herself a feminist because she believes in accountability and so right. forth. Yeah, you should date that person provided the, the values are lined up and she has yeah. all the other prerequisites. Yeah, but the the angry, bitter, sad, um, victimized feminist. The most obvious problem with dating anybody who who has an ideology that says i'm the victim and i'm being mistreated is that once the honeymoon is over guess who the oppressor is because this person <laughs> has to have an oppressor yep. and if this person is thinking that men in general are my oppressor and then the honeymoon starts to fade which is somewhere between 12 and 18 months our brain chemistry starts to to reach its baseline and we start to see the other person as a real person not as an idealized person then at that point and I've seen this like clockwork when when couples come in and the, the woman has a, a, a 
yeah, identitarian feminist mm. ideology that that finds its way into the relationship. And I don't see that a whole lot because th frankly, there's not a lot of hardcore feminists off campus and functioning in the real world because it's such a dysfunctional way of going through the world that right. people don't have much tolerance for it other than on campus. You know, you're, you're celebrated on campus, but it always finds its way into the relationship. And then the man becomes the oppressor and you can't argue with somebody constructively if they think that you are mistreating them at every turn. People that are victims, which this is a psychological thing. People that are victims want something to blame. They want something that justifies the reason why they are other than themselves. You want something to point at, to be like, that's why I'm fucked up. That's why I have a bad uh, situation. And when this happens, it's, it becomes a habit. It, be, it becomes a, a mindset. It's not me because that would hurt your ego. It becomes something else. I'm not insufficient. I'm not stupid. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I can make money if I want, but it's this thing that's holding me back. I could, like, I could be successful, but this thing over here is holding me back. And I'll say this. What happened when they gave Hitler a mile of Poland's border? He tried to take over the world. And now we're giving, we're giving these feminists an inch and I feel like they're trying to take the whole fucking cake. Like they're trying to take everything. There's gonna come a point and, and they want something to blame. It's never gonna stop. This is never gonna be a case where they had enough because it's victim mentality. What's gonna happen is all of us, we're gonna be in straight jackets here in decades, years from now, all in straight jackets. And they're gonna be bitching about the fact that we glanced at them, that we had, that we, that we had an idea, that we spoke. It's gonna be like 1920s reversed for females and men, where women were not allowed to have an idea. Now it's gonna be the men. Now the men are not allowed to have an idea. And it's just gonna be a constant taking of more and more. We give them an inch, they take the mile. They take the, they take the entire cake and we're fucked. And if we continue to allow victims to appropriate this victim mentality to, like, to not stand up for themselves, to actually take real actions that help their lives, to look at the winner mentality, look at what they do have control over, their lives won or fucked over. They can't improve in their own lives. They're, they're always gonna have some reason for why their lives suck, for taking actual responsibility for their lives. And we're, we're depriving these people of that, and they're also fucking the other part of the people over. I feel like they literally made a problem that doesn't exist. So they have something to blame. So they have something to point their fucking finger at. So the next part is going to be on pronouns. Now, personally, I don't really care either way. Like I, <laughs> I don't mind calling people by what they want to be called. However, I, I think that there's, there's so much valuable logic behind the idea of trying to force somebody to call you something. It's, I'm surprised that other people aren't really drawing the lines, but instead of me myself, um, explaining this, I figured that I'd have an expert do this himself. So I'm gonna post a video here of Jordan Peterson. Check it out. First thing I would say is, you know, pro pronouns, and I'm not a linguist, so I'm not gonna be able to whip this off the top of my head. Although I do know that um, there is a psychologist named James Pennebaker who's written a whole book on pronouns, which you might be interested in referring to. And pronouns turn out to be extraordinarily important as signifiers, but they're also part of what's called a closed linguistic category, and they don't change. And so that's something that's useful to know. But you also bring up the distinction, or the lack of distinction, or made a lack of distinction between adjectives and pronouns. And that's pretty interesting, eh? because there's no real reason why, if you can't insist upon which pronoun I use to address you, you can't also insist on which adjective I use to address you. And there's a lot more adjectives. And, and so that's, because I don't see, like, if, if you can choose your damn pronoun, why can't you choose your adjective, you know? I mean, adjectives are, you, the list, the words you listed as pejorative were actually not pronouns, they were adjectives. And so you can, you can object to them. And it, there's no shortage of times when you use a pejorative adjective to describe someone, especially if you believe that they've misbehaved. It's like, if the person can insist upon their pronoun, why can't they insist upon their adjective? And that's another part of this problem with this multiplicative complexity that it isn't addressed properly within the law. With regards to respect, you know, you said, well, human civilization progresses a lot better if we respect one another, and I, I actually don't believe that at all. I believe that human civilization pr progresses and maintains itself when we respect people who've earned respect. You don't just respect everybody randomly. Well, what the hell use is respect if you just respect people randomly? It's like inflating the currency, you know? It's like the Simpsons episode where, you know, Bart gets a trophy because it's every child gets a trophy day. All you do is inflate the currency. Respect is actually limited to that category of people who have earned respect in some manner. So whatever you're talking about with regards to, say, common decency between people, it's not respect. And the definitions actually matter. They matter a lot. And so I hear the respect argument all the time, but you also can't force me to respect you. 
you, I mean, you might be able to force me to act like I respect you, but you can't force me to respect you. It's just not possible. And you could break me, I suppose, and, and then perhaps I would do it, although I can't see exactly how precisely. Okay, now the next one I want to get into is harassment. Now, as a dating coach, this is the thing that probably affects me and my clients the most, and a lot of poor guys that are like trying to prove themselves with women, they, they have this issue where now because culture and society is so hard against them, telling them they're evil for having a sex drive, they're so evil and like and callous and shitty and they're, they have toxic masculinity for wanting to show that they have attraction for another girl, that it, it's, it's, you guys have no idea how many men there are in their basements that are going years without sex, without having the, uh, like a sexual partner. Um, I, I've know of like so many poor guys that are out there that have no recourse for this. Like as a woman, you guys probably don't understand this. You guys, again, like I said, have inherent value. You have inherent value for being young and attractive. However, as a guy, you have to have a certain like fire behind your eyes. You have to have like that, that, that passion. You have to have that confidence, that, that masculine energy. And when, when you lack this, women aren't attracted to you. Like I, I've talked about this a lot in my videos and I explained the idea behind this. So I'm not gonna get into this specifically, but biologically, as a man, you have to present yourself in a certain way to be attractive. And if you're not one, getting a constant flow of women, two, you don't have abundance, three, you don't, you're, you're not self-confident. It's really tough for you to feel worthy to talk to a girl. And you guys pick up on this shit really fast. You guys are very sensitive to where, what a guy's thinking, how he feels about himself, um, subconsciously more or less. Like I've seen girls like, like I would have times where I'd be talking to a girl and the second that I had like a, like an introspective thought about how, like a, that was negative towards myself or I'd flinch or I'd feel like, or I'd break eye contact with a girl out of peer pressure, out of pressure, like societal pressure or social pressure. Um, the girl instantaneously, I see the attraction gone in her eyes, like just instantaneously. And I, and I've, I've seen the way the girls always explain it is like, oh, I don't know. It was. He was cool, but you know, he's not my type or like, it, it's like people don't know how to quantify their emotions half the time. So they'll come up with logical reasoning that may or may not be true or right. Again, like as my, my viewers know, way too many fucking women. I've been in way too many relationships. I've had way too much sex, more than I would ever admit on camera. And it, it's not so much that. Like I, I've, I've studied, I've worked, I've experimented with this and it's a lot, attraction works a lot different than it does for men for women. Like we just, the dating experience is a completely different beast. Like it's so much so that as a dating coach for men, I would still not feel comfortable giving women advice on dating because it's just so vastly different. It's like baseball to basketball. That's how different it is. It's just a completely different thing. And like, I, I <laughs> like, and I feel like women are constantly giving men the worst fucking advice in regards to this, especially feminists. The feminists give the worst fucking advice when it comes to this kind of shit. And they're always surprised when their social circle of guys like suddenly come out and like, I like you. When all this time they're like, they've been, they've been trying to play this perfect game with the girl and then all of a sudden she's, he's into you. And unfortunately, cause he's been listening to your advice, he's a total pussy. And you're not attracted to him, you're dried up by him. So you're like, oh, you're just not my type. You're, he's not your type because you, you curtailed him be this way. You told him, this is what I want in a man. And then when he was that, you weren't attracted to it. So in this part too, I'm also gonna get into how feminism kind of fucks up the attractiveness of men. How men that listen to this shit ultimately <laughs> become very weak looking and effeminate and a very unattractive towards women. And I've seen this so many times where a man follows the rules of what like a feminist says and then he gets really pissed off because the scenario didn't work out as he was, as he believed it would. He, was, he followed these rules, like the same way that like back maybe like 10 years ago, everybody listened to Disney. And like, I'm gonna get her flowers. I'm taking her on three dates. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Then some guy like me or one of my friends comes along and the girl starts dating us. Like the, the, the rules of attraction don't, like I said, it's so fucking vastly different. And I studied this for years. Like for women, I, like I've studied women's side of dating for a very long time and I still don't feel comfortable like teaching and coaching. Now, if you're under the belief that you do understand this 110% and you never went through a period of like, of not being confident and then you never put your energy into this, I'm gonna guarantee you this, you're probably under the Dunning-Kruger effect. You're, you're probably one of these people that gets emotional and then rationalizes their emotions with logic to like, it, like basically like, uh, hear me out. I'm very, very good at this and I'm also putting it lightly, pretty intelligent. Like I'm, I know what I'm talking about in this situation. I put so much energy and so much effort into this. When it comes down to it, feminism is hurting so many men in this area because you guys are giving people bad advice, terrible advice that fucks them over for the rest of their lives. 
There are these guys that go years without having sex, guys with high sex drives. And then you wonder, like, why you get school shootings and shit like that. These, these poor guys have no outlet for this masculine energy for the way they're born. Like the same way that a gay guy or like some guy that's supposedly born in a woman's, like, like in a woman's body. Like, can you imagine that? But like for a wider audience, can you imagine like, let's say that there was more gay people and, but we told them all that they're not allowed to be gay. And then we shoved them the fuck down. Like how, like how much more suicide do you think we'd have? Men have a way higher suicide rate than women. And it's, it's been that way for a while, but it's been spiking a lot lately. And I would argue it's because of this feminist movement, this movement that you and who you are is not good. You're a bad person for who you are, for the way you were born, for having a sex drive, for looking at a girl's butt. And that's just, it's, it's fucked up. It's ultimately just so inherently evil. And it's not you guys being evil. It's like the doctrine itself. Like, so like people are so egotistical to think that they could not fall into a doctrine that is less than productive for society. Like think about the Aryan movement, the Nazis, think about Marxism, think about, um, there, there was, I cannot remember the exact name of this, but there was a potato uh, famine. And, um, actually I'm not even going to get into that. Essentially, long story short, it's, it's historically a big thing for people to get very emotional about something. And then because they get emotional about something, they take actions that hurt society as a whole, that massively fuck things up and hurt people. And we're doing that right now where so many people are being hurt by this, where so many people are being fucked over. So here's, here's, my, here's my rules. Here's my side of the harassment movement. The rule is you're always allowed to approach. Always. Always, always, always. There's no reason why you should not be able to show intention towards a person. Because what's the alternative? For you women, you guys can go on your Tinder. You swipe. Oh my God, he likes me. Swipe. Oh my God, he likes me. Swipe. Oh my God, he likes me. It's just like, literally, you guys have your choices through Tinder. But as a man, women care a lot about the personality, the, the high status and values that the guy has. So when I approach a girl, I do way fucking better in person than I do on Tinder any day of the week. Way fucking better. Like the quality of women I get is just, it's night and day. Like so vastly different. And I could not imagine myself ever like falling back on one of these like dating profiles to find myself a girl. And I never will. And here's another thing. I think a lot of people, they, they put this, this bad connotation towards guys that are creepy. That, that a creepy person isn't of value. Now, for me, I have so much empathy towards creepy guys because I used to be that. And it took me a lot of years of me going out and approaching and thinking critically, how can I be a better person? How can I, how can I be more attractive to the opposite sex? To where it finally clicked for me and I, and I became a pretty cool guy. Like if you were to talk to me, talk to me in public, I'm very fucking smooth. I'm very charismatic. I'm very empathetic. I'm like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a light in like a, in a dark room. I'm like, that's just my personality, my empathy. And that's because I went out and I approached as a creepy guy for a long time. It wasn't the fact that I was approaching that made me creepy. It was just inherent in me. And by going out and approaching it, it burned it away like fat on a skillet. It's, it's very necessary for a guy that's like me to put himself out there to realize, oh, this mentality I have is bad. And then to see it back to back to back. Now, this is where the creepiness is coming from. Now, for you women, I'm gonna give you guys a visual for the men's side of things. Now. For the majority of men, sex is a very hard thing to get and it's like rolling the dice for most men. Um, it, it's, it's a very long route to get out of this kind of a zone, to get into a level of abundance so that you can actually be and treat a person like a person because the alternative is this. You go years without having sex, without having a partner that loves you, without having like where you think that every year you're just gonna go to the grave without somebody that loves you, without having kids, without having that family value system that a lot of people value nowadays, that they, that they say is like such a big fucking deal. The, the alternative to like us not doing harassment is telling these guys, go back to your basement. You're not good enough. You're not allowed. You're not like these other guys. I don't like you and I don't accept you. Go back to your cave. Cause you think that these guys have options and they're just trying to fuck you over or something like that. Or you think that like, you guys don't take the time to be empathetic. Like you guys so much preach about in this, this whole movement about being empathetic, but you guys are like fucking over the biggest sector of people. And you're like, you're shoving them down saying you're not good enough. When you guys are going to help out like a small subsect portion. But when it comes to a bigger portion of people that are really fucking in a lot of pain, you're like, no, fuck you. Fuck you. And that's not fair. That's just not fair whatsoever. Most men, they don't know that they can improve. And you women, you guys, you guys like don't have the kind of pressures on a man to be a better person or to have value or to have things outside of yourself that prop you up as a person. Cause you act a lot differently when you know that you have things. I, I talk to a girl in a way that's massively different than if I don't have any women in, in my subsect. If I don't have a girl, like I, if I don't have options, 
When I talk to a girl, I'm gonna act way fucking differently and a lot less attractive than if I had like 20 girls behind me. If I had 20 girls back home, I act way differently, a lot more charismatic. And it's just, it's biological. It's not the same thing as it is for women. You guys are inherently valuable, like inherently attractive. But for men, it's not enough to be physically attractive. Like there's a, there's a lot of other things that play a factor in a man being attractive. And men subconsciously or consciously, consciously know this. It's, it's just, it's something that every man knows. And the problem is that most men believe that they can't improve. They can't become more attractive. They can't make money. They can't, um, they, they can't become healthier. They can't have a better life. Like if you're born a certain way, you're born a certain way and you can't improve and you should not expect to. And by telling men that you're, that you're not allowed to come and approach me, you're not allowed to shoot your shot. One, it's, it's, um, you, you could be losing out on an amazing guy first and foremost. Like maybe the guy that you, uh, approaches you is super fucking cool and you like him. Maybe you guys have an amazing relationship. Or maybe that guy, by the act of approaching a lot of girls, eventually figures it out for himself and becomes an even better person for whatever girl he ends up dating down the line. And by taking this away from him, you're, you're, you're taking the, the, the life potential out of this man to make a better world out there. By not allowing him to approach, you're fucking us all over. By saying, you're not good enough, fuck you. Uh, get back in your hole. You're a bad person for even like even showing sexual intent towards me. Fuck you. Like that's fucked up. That's just such an asshole move. For a lot of you men who do approach a girl every so often, she gets mad at you. It's half the time it's not you, it's her. The way that I always think about it is usually like if somebody does have like a bad reaction to you approaching, they're very quickly letting you know that they're not for you. Not everybody likes a Ferrari. Some people like Camrys. All right. It's not that big a deal. Okay. And women, if you want to be mad and angry and mean towards men, that's fine. Like, honestly, it's as a man, you have to learn how to handle adversity and that's fine. But I think it, it's a different thing when you guys start telling people that they need to make it a law. They need to make it to where it's illegal for you to approach, where they start arresting people and putting them in prison for talking to random girls, trying to improve and trying to put themselves out there. That's where it's fucked up. And it's been happening a lot lately. And that's not fair. If you feel the need to be rude and mean to a, a random guy that approaches you, that's on you. Um, Again, I think about the emotional gas mask. If you're in a negative, bad mood, that's on you. It's not on me. I'm going to continue to be positive, but I'll continue to be positive over here. And that's the way I visualize it and I think about it. There's a lot of girls that love the shit out of me. You're just not one of them. It's okay. It's not for everybody. Like I'm not for every type of girl. And that's the way you should live your life. Like you, you shouldn't be for everybody. You should like, you should find your subsect of people that you love and that love you back. And they're like super hardcore about you. Like my audience here, this audience, you guys, if you guys are not subscribe to me my audience is very fucking hardcore for me and that's because i'm not for everybody like my content is very specific and very nuanced not everybody can keep up not everybody have this, has the intelligence to keep up with this shit and because of this i draw a very nuanced intelligent audience to me other people who can't keep up generally speaking they hate me and that's okay i don't need everybody like me again punishing guys for ha having a high sex drive is like punishing a schizophrenic for you know, having a mental disorder. If the answer is you wouldn't do it to that person, then definitely don't fucking do it to us. Don't have this double standard where it's okay for them, but it's not okay for this person. Or this person being born this way is wrong, but this person being born this way, that's okay. Because you're hurting us. We're, I'm a very empathetic, caring creature. And it, I don't do anything ever from a place of hate. I never do anything from a place of trying to hurt somebody. When I approach, I try to bring up the vibe and like make everybody more positive and alive in the eyes. I try to bring up the vibe and have it make everybody have fun. I don't even approach sometimes to like hit on a girl. I approach to make a friend, to make a connection. Cause I like the intimacy side of this, like uh, the most out of everything. Like aside from like, you know, getting women, aside from becoming a lot more socially like powerful and intellectual, aside from like, you know, this being kind of my form of meditation and self-development, I love going out there and just connecting with people. Like right now I'm stuck inside because of this coronavirus and legitimately I'm like, I'm at the grocery store approaching people. Like I, I love this shit. And you know, it's telling me that I'm not allowed to talk to a stranger, that I'm not enough, that I, that like, I, I can't like try to make a connection. That's, that's anti-human. That's against me. Like I'm a social creature. Like don't fucking do that to me. Now, this is the argument I'd like to have. I, I honestly don't think either side has it better or worse. Currently, I think it's worse for men because of feminism, but so if you look at and you average together all the wins and losses of both sexes, ultimately, I think it evens out. Ultimately, I think it's fair. I think it's all on the same wavelength. I don't think there's anybody that has it better or worse. You guys won the, the feminist regime like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. You guys, you guys had equality 20 to 30 years ago. You guys had that long ago. Like you guys already won the war. And I feel like at this point, it's just an emotional war that you guys are trying to win because again, it's not a logical based argument. I'm gonna say this, I don't see a lot of Nazis, but I see a fuck ton of feminists. I don't see anybody that's like 
raping people in the streets, but I see a lot of feminists that are pointing fingers and getting really pissed off at these poor clients that I bring out every week, week after week. I had some client the, um, during Halloween that uh, came out to a Cardi B concert and I was having approached girls, super sweet guy, super cool dude. And every girl that he approached was like, buy me a drink. And second he bought her a drink, she'd bounce. And this happened consecutively to the point where I told him, dude, don't buy another girl a drink. And the women started getting really pissed off at him because he said no to buying a drink. Like, you guys want equality, but like when it comes down to like the nitty gritty, the shit that you get, like all of a sudden, like it's okay for these double standards to be the case. Like you can't have your cake and eat it too. You guys need to stop that shit. Now, again, I don't think that the people in this are necessarily evil. It's not, they're not evil. You guys are super empathetic people. You guys are just going about this the wrong way. Um, you guys are in your emotions and you think you're doing the right thing. But I'm gonna say, say this, this, this pathway that you guys have done, gone down and that you've invested time into is hurting so many people. And I know that when you invest so much time into something that's really hard to, to pull your ego out of it and take a moment and be like, oh, I fucked up. I get that. Like I, I get, like I've done that myself where I, like I used to, I went through a period when I went from being a nice guy to being a total asshole for a bit. And I did exactly that. I was standing in the middle of the road here and I'm like, whoa, I fucked up. I need to change. And I became a more empathetic person. You guys are do, need to do just this. Like, you, like it, it's a very emotionally painful thing to do. And it's very hard, especially when you put your ego invested so much into something. But you need to take that moment, be introspective, be like, whoa, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, think it through. If your true purpose is to be empathetic and caring, that's exactly what I want you to do. If your true purpose is to help people out, don't even, don't even agree with me. Just give me the, the, the one thing, give me this one thing and actually think it through critically. Take your emotions out of the equation. Ask yourself, am I helping people? Am I in the right or am I in the wrong? Because if you actually do care about people and that is your movement, that is what you guys want, that's exactly what you guys would fucking do. And you guys want to make this like fucking statement that when I give you logical statements that, that like you're hurting people and I give you like fact after fact after fact, don't, don't tell me that like that I'm mansplaining because that's just essentially you trying to win your argument because you have an ego, because you want to win. Stop. It's not about winning. It's about who you're hurting because you're hurting a lot of fucking people. So stop. Think it through. Breathe. You feel that anger in your chest and you want to write that fucking comment? Stop. Think it through. Because I promise you, more than likely, if you do this, you're going to be helping out so much more people than if you stick to your stance. What are women telling men in regards to dating that are hurting them? They're actually making them less attractive to the sex they're actually trying to get. Or following this, this feminist sort of doctrine of how you should behave, you shouldn't be stoked, you should let your emotions, and then they end up getting angry at you know the women for not behaving the way they expect them to behave, mm -hmm. the women then say all men are bad, right? Because they're surrounded by them. Yeah. So these these feminist types are surrounded by these weak, ineffective, nice guys who make them angry and resentful, and that's because it's the only men they see. They then say you know all men are abusers, all men are this way, or most men tend to be. So then when you see like it, it was something I, I saw on Twitter a while ago when I started looking at the meme that was reset the clock when male feminists turn out to be abusers. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no wonder feminists think all men are bad. They've surrounded themselves by these feminist men who are bad. So now that's their, that's their world, it's what they experience. The feminist men that, that you're asserting, and I wouldn't disagree that they have that nice guy right. um, cluster of, of behaviors, that, that covert sort of aggression and, and, and just, right. just that bitterness. That well, it's, it's like uh, you, you have these guys who, they're not necessarily weak but they think they're on the right path. And then when they find out they're not, they get really angry. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, what, what did you, what, what did you mention before? Like a cost fallacy that you've invested so much S into this. Some cost, cost fallacy. Yeah. Some yeah. cost fallacy. You've invested so much into this that now that it's backfiring on you, you're furious, you're mm -hmm. angry. First one is vulnerability is sexy. Vulnerability is sexy for somebody like Brad Pitt. If you're Brad Pitt and you're like so high above the other girl you're talking to, like, like status wise, and the girl's intimidated by you, because you're the, famous actor, you did Angelie Jolie, and now you're gonna date this average girl? Of course, like be vulnerable because you need a comfort versus attraction. You need to like lower yourself down to a level. But if you're somebody that has a normal job, a normal life, shit like that, being vulnerable will do nothing but chase girls away and drive their panties about you, okay? This is the time you wanna be vulnerable. When she invests in you and you guys start getting into a relationship, when she's earned you being open about who you are, then do it. Otherwise, be a man, 
and like just keep it to yourself. It doesn't mean shoving it down, doesn't mean doing this. You, you open up to people that are in your social circle. You open up to your family, to your best friends, to a girl you've been dating for a while, but not to a stranger in a club, not to a girl you've been dating on three dates that you've been fucking around with in an open relationship. Wait it out. The vulnerability should be special for the girl that you give it to. But if you just give it to everybody, it's like devaluing the currency. And it's not a masculine thing to do. Now the next one is that women like men. Don't listen to them trying to feminize you. Don't listen to them talking about being emotional, about um, trying to not chase your purpose, not being willing to have a sex drive, not willing to be an aggressive person in general. These things are healthy because that's who you are. Like the more authentic you are to this side of you, the better off you'll be. Now, women, like I said, love dating men. I, I, I have a lot of uh, bisexual girls in my, in, my, um, in my little, you know, group of girls that I'm kind of seeing right now. And it's really funny. This is the consistent consensus I get among them. It's like, when I ask them, do you date women or just, you know, mess around with them? They're like, oh, well, I dated one girl once and, but I, but, but I found that I really like dating guys. I like, I like sleeping around with women. I like, you know, messing around with them, but I don't like dating them. And it, it's been like across the board where it's like that, or it's like, you know, I like, I like fucking girls, but I don't like dating them. I like men. They want men. They want that masculine vibe. If you notice like the, the lesbians that are really successful at dating, they, they like go to the far left corner of being what a man is. Like they're like, they're doing their like character of what they think a man is. They're like, I'm gonna be an asshole. And that's not what a man is. They're like, I'm gonna be an asshole and a dick. Fuck you, fuck you. And they're gonna like try to chest bump you. I had some girl like legit, like try to punch me in the chest the other day. And it's like, dude, that's not what being a man is, man. That's not what being a dude is. You're, you're getting it wrong. You're building up this like character of what a man is but you're completely falling like flat. It's again like a woman trying to tell a man what he is, the same way that if a man was to tell a woman what she is, it's, it's a lot, it's just different. They want solidity and strength. They wanna date a guy that's above them, not at their level, all right? Like if you ever look at somebody that's actually dating these dime pieces you want, for every hot girl, there's a guy that's tired of fucking her and she's always dating that dude. Like a girl wants to date somebody out of her league and if you're like supplicating or being, making yourself a lower value, you're not gonna get the quality of woman that you want. Don't listen to that advice. That advice is stupid. Now, the next one is arrogance is sexy, and it is. It's absolutely sexy. If you want to approach and attract like a very hot girl, the more arrogant, the better. And I mean congruent arrogance. Now, some of you guys are going to be moving from that place where you're inauthentically becoming arrogant, and you're going to get punished by girls because the incongruity behind it, and girls are going to attack you for this. But I'll put it this way. If you, if you don't do that, if you don't fake it till you make it, you're never going to become the attractive person you want to be. And if you're going to let girls corral you and tell you what you can or can't be and that, you know, that like you're, you're wrong, she doesn't know your, your end goal trajectory. She thinks that you're just going to be stuck like this. Like, keep the route because the arrogance is sexy. It's attractive, 110%. All right, it's, it's, a, it's a good trait to have around women. Now, the next one is girls actually do honestly love players. They do. Not on a logical level. Of course, if you ask a girl logically, She's gonna be like, oh yeah, I hate players. But if you ask her <laughs> who she's dated in the past, she'd be like, oh yeah, he was an asshole, he was an asshole, that guy was an asshole, that guy was a dick. And it's like, okay, but you don't like assholes. And like, no, I don't, I hate them all. And then she ends up dating another one. It's like girls like guys who are good with women. Um, the, the, so here in Vegas, a lot of the women out here have heard about me and they know me, and a lot of them are trying to fuck me. Like it's very consistent where a girl heard about me through a friend and then she tries to take me out on a date or meet me at my place or try to, you know, cause she heard I was good in bed. It's, it's consistent. Like if I go to a club and I talk to a bunch of different girls, usually the girls start fighting over me. But if I talk to one girl singularly, that one girl won't usually value me as much unless like another girl's fighting for me. It's so consistent where that's the case. It's biology. It's like pre-selection. If, if a girl sees you getting liked by another girl, that must mean you're of value. So then biological like uh, key kicks in this little button in the girl's head where it's like, oh, he's an attractive male. It doesn't matter what you look like. You hit the pre-selection switch. Now you're attractive. Okay. And now as a caveat to this, women like dominant guys. They love dominant guys. They like guys that are in charge. They like cops, professors. They love their bosses. Like if you're in a boss position and you're over the top of a girl, there is a likely chance the girl's going to find you more attractive than a girl would outside of the job. It's, it's just biological. And I think the problem is that people, again, are not looking at the fact that we're animals. You and me, everybody's watching this video, we're all animals and we all come from a place. We're all like built on biological drives to try to procreate and raise the chances of our genetics getting to the next generation. 
Now, what kind of guy would help you get that kind of outcome? The answer is a dominant guy, a guy that's in charge. This is the guy that can help you out with getting your genetics to the next generation. So it's an attractive trait. Now, for everything that feminism seems to be doing, what they seem to be claiming the other side is doing, they seem to be doing in kind. They seem to be procreating racism, sexism, like all the things that they're trying to eradicate, equality, they seem to be doing the complete opposite of, like on every fucking point. Anything that they say, that, they, that I've seen, that they claim the other side is doing, they seem to be doing in kind. And it's just ridiculous nobody's noticed this. It doesn't take like a brain surgeon to figure this out. Like it looks like just common knowledge. It just seems like logical. And I wondered for a long time why this could be the case. And so every time I met a feminist, I would do their Myers-Briggs. And so oftentimes what I find is they're either an ESFJ or an ENFJ. That they have a hard judging function, which means that they're like very, this is the way the world works, but they're also, um, their dominant function is extroverted feelings. Not extroverted logic, not internal logic, it's extroverted feelings. They're not playing on the same basis. They're, they're looking at the feeling side of things. So if you ever actually have an argument or discussion with a feminist, it's not the fact of the logic. Like if you try to give them facts, they, they don't give a fuck about the facts. What, what they care about is the fact that they think that by men like me, being logical by men, being logical, that we're hurting a lot of people and we're causing inequality. But the problem is that you guys aren't looking at logic. And logic says that's not the case. Logic says that we're actually helping people. There's no other way of doing it. Biologically, us as people, I feel like we want more for our group, more for our tribe. And the problem is that feminism thinks that their tribe is feminists. They, they don't look at the rest of us as equals. They, they want to take the entire fucking cake at the expense of the rest of us. Feminism is a closed-minded, sexist, racist, bigoted, callous, deceitful, evil, selfish, power-hungry movement. And I stick by those words. They're claiming all these things on the other side, but they are literally falling in like so snugly into these, these labels themselves. And it's fucked up. They're hurting so many people. And people are just allowing it because they get emotional because they get mad. They're hurting people. Fuck them. Now, I know you're not a bad person. I know that the people in this are not bad people. So I know if you can look past the emotions, look at the logic, you want to be thinking the way you were. All right, so I'm gonna ask you to suspend the emotional side of this because if you really want empathy, it's not gonna be fought in the way you're doing it because you're getting it the wrong fucking way. I'm gonna try my best from this point on to save as many men from the society that you guys created. So from one community to another, Go fuck yourselves. Most do it, rap's truest. I know the flow fluent. And no student at school, I was the most truant. Echo will ruin the way you listen to rap now. A boom bap kid that will murder your modern trap sound. I got him rap now. Ricky Bobby on the beat. And shake and bake, it's a mistake if you're fucking with me. Bringing the heat, I'm not allowed in California now. The